People are gonna start thinking I live in my car. I should rename my channel to like everything but makeup mobster. Random thought in my head. I, um, back a while ago, got obsessed with the Jodi Arias trial. Um, I totally, 1000% think she is guilty, think she premeditated the murder, yada, yada, yada. If you found this video, chances are, um, it was for a reason. You're looking up for information, you're trying to figure stuff out. Same, you know, bullshit I went through. Back when I was first, um, getting into the trial because there was just so many different, you know, facets and so many things going on. I'm not gonna go through the whole case. If you, you know, if you don't know the case, you shouldn't be watching this video, to be honest with you. Here's the thing. I read Juan Martinez's book. Uh, I also read Nermi's book. So if anybody has any questions about it or if they think it's worth, you know, reading, I'll let you know. So I read Juan Martinez's book when it came out, which was like way back in, I think, February sometime. And to be honest with you, his book was good, but it was basically just reiterating all the stuff that we already knew. There wasn't much new information, but it was really well written and, and it was interesting. The main thing that he really talked about was how he, like, you know, his uh, his Perry Mason moment where he, you know, realized with the gas cans and how he factored that in. And, it, you know, it was kind of interesting to hear how he works and how he, you know, does things and whatever. The one thing that came out of his book that I had not seen before, well, I've seen before, but it gave me a whole new perspective. And that was Exhibit 162. And that's the picture of, you know, Jody's foot um, standing in front of Travis's body we all saw it the versions that were on the internet prior to you know Juan Martinez's book those those versions were all blurry and pixelated because I'm pretty sure they were all screenshots of the trial so it was like somebody paused the trial and they were showing the picture took a screenshot and then like either cropped it or whatever nobody had a full resolution version of it or at least I I never saw one and that was really funny because when she was in the interrogation she's like that's his bathroom she pointed it out right away and I'm like how did she see his bathroom in there like it's so blurry now I know why because she was probably looking at the better version of the picture when I first saw that picture I looked at it I was like squinting my eyes I'm like what am I looking at because that upon first seeing it if somebody doesn't explain it to you it's kind of hard to see it in a way it's like one of those like optical illusion pictures almost but as soon as it was explained to me I completely got it and, I, and now I don't see anything but I went on her Jodi Arias is innocent site and there's this girl Jade who writes you know she writes all these ridiculous posts she's really rude really condescending and it's a shame because you know what she really does you know she's very articulate and has a good way with words but what she's saying her content sucks um so i read her post about the uh, about the picture she did a whole post about about the foot picture there was one thing that she said everything else she was seeing like pillows and i don't know suitcases and all this crazy shit but the one thing that that she um that she saw kind of all of a sudden made sense to me and i hate admitting that because i hate like agreeing with these people some of their ideas are just so you know far out in space too crazy so anyway um so the thing that she said was that travis had to still be alive in the in in exhibit 162 and i will show you guys a picture of it so if you guys look at the picture um his head is being held up which she pointed out his arm is, is is being held up she was saying he was alive he couldn't hold his head up and this and that and when i really went back and i looked at the picture even the old version i was like wait a second how would he be able to hold his head up like that on that angle and i had asked a couple of my you know people i talk about the trial with and they said that his head was leaning on her leg but now that i have the clear version when i look at it there is no way that his head could be leaning on her leg because understand perspective in in pictures or drawing or anything like that and you look at the picture her leg is too far her legs too big it's too close to the lens and it wouldn't make sense his head would be up here a lot bigger if it was leaning up against her leg so if you compare it to her leg her leg his head looks too small if that makes any sense and he was a big guy and so even if it was her other leg i personally feel like we would see some part of that leg in the picture because if you really look his head would only be leaning in the very back corner so like maybe this much of his head right here would be leaning but here's the thing and this is what really makes me think that he was alive in the picture 
if his neck, if his throat was cut, which is what, you know, the prosecution basically laid out for us during the trial. So if his throat was really cut at that point in time, she nearly decapitated him. There was only like an inch or so left in the back. She cut right up to the neck bone. Do you guys feel this bone back here? That's your spine and, and all, you know, your neck is, bone is closer to the back. So she cut pretty deep. You're talking like probably to here. So if his head was even leaning up on her leg like that, it wouldn't be at that kind of 45 degree angle that we see it at because it would just flop forward if, if, um, or it would flop all the way back if it was cut because you have to think about it. Picture if you cut a straw and you know just left a little bit the straw would bend and then it would go back up but it would either go forward or it would go back up i just don't think his head would have support i just don't think it would have you know been able to be held up at that angle the other thing is his arm his arm is is up um and everybody's like, oh, she's grabbing it. But again, if you look in the relativity to where her foot is, she would have to have like Inspector Gadget, go, go gadget arms to be able to, you know, be holding his hand. It would be very awkward for the way she would be holding his hand. What I personally think happened. Um, If you guys want, you should watch the Grey Hughes video. I will put a link in the description. He did a whole video about this. And what he says really makes sense. And he kind of figured out where she's standing in the hallway. And he labels the tiles from the first one, you know, let's just say from the rug to the bedroom where all that blood was so it was one two three back that's where he thinks that her foot was it was either three or four tiles back and so that that means that they're not all the way down the hallway so to me he that's in the middle of the hallway now if you remember Juan Martinez's closing um statement now he claims that Travis ran down the hallway and slid down the wall if you look at the pictures now and you watch Gray Hughes's video, he has a picture where he shows the tile that she's standing on. And that is the exact spot. That is the exact spot where the rainbow starts, where the blood. So what I think was happening in that picture was that he was getting up. You know, she could have been helping him or in shock or, you know, maybe just getting him up to taunt him somewhere. I I mean, she must have been in shock like this guy's not dying i already stabbed him this many times he's still not dead this guy is not dying and she knew she had to kill him you she was not walking away with that and so i think that's why it got so gruesome because she just panicked because she thought it was going to be like a one two three he's dead thing and it didn't work out like that i think that that's what happened i think he got up i think he slid down the floor whether she helped him or not i don't know um but that is now he gets down to that point and he falls on his face and that's where she slices his neck. So in reality, if he wasn't dead at exhibit 162 at that picture, that means that he suffered even more than we think because he still had to get to the end of the hallway and that could have taken a minute or so and then have his throat slit. It's disgusting. Tomorrow's the date of the murder and just to honor him because he was an awesome you know, person. I'm not saying he was a saint, but you know what? Um, he didn't deserve to die. He really just didn't. And the whole thing was so tragic and just could have been avoided. I'm interested to hear if anybody else agrees with me on this. If you want, leave some comments below and thumbs up this video. And if you guys want me to make more videos, I know the trial's over, but if you guys want me to make more videos about this, let me know. All right, bye.